Hello and welcome to this video on when you should not use structural equation modeling. My name is Christian Geiser. I'm an instructor and statistical consultant with Quantfish and on this channel I present weekly statistics tutorials. On Tuesdays I usually talk about an analysis in the Mplus software and on Thursdays I address more general issues in multivariate statistical analysis including structural equation modeling, factor analysis, multi-level analysis and latent class modeling. If this is something that interests you, then please subscribe to this channel. Also, don't forget to hit the like button and to check out the description for additional resources, including a link to my free weekly statistics newsletter, as well as courses that I offer through Quantfish. In this video, I want to address the question of when, in which situation you should not use structural equation modeling. So when should you not use SEM? You, if you already know this channel or you know me, then you know that I'm a big fan and advocate of structural equation modeling and other latent variable models. I think that they're awesome. I think it is great to use latent variables correct for measurement error and these methods are very flexible. They offer many possibilities and so in general I am all for using structural equation modeling. However, there are situations where um, you should maybe consider using other methods and people sometimes ask me, is there other situations where you would not recommend SEM or where we shouldn't use SEM? And so the first thing then that comes to my mind is when your sample size is not large enough. So in many situations, we just simply are not in a position where we can collect enough data to have a large enough sample size for a meaningful structural equation modeling or factor analysis um, analysis. So then when simply our sample is too small, we have maybe only 80 cases or less, then um, I would say probably it's not a good idea. It's a better idea to stick with simpler methods such as, for example, regression analysis because an SEM might cause you problems when your sample size is too small. You might run into power issues such that for example, your tests of model fit don't have enough power to reject an incorrect model. So you might assume that your model is correct when in fact it's just um, a matter of power that you don't have enough power for your chi-square test of model fit. And so the model will seemingly fit your data well even though it doesn't or you might not find statistical significance of the parameters of interest. So there may not be sufficient power to show the effects of interest and then that can be a problem. Also small sample applications sometimes run into the risk of improper solutions so you have a higher likelihood that you will get for example a negative error variance for an indicator or other improper solutions when your sample size isn't large enough. There might be convergence problems and other issues. So generally um, we should have a sufficiently large sample for SEM. If we don't have that, then maybe it's better to use other techniques. Furthermore, usually in structural equation modeling, we use multiple indicators for each latent variable, and that may sometimes not be possible to collect um, multiple indicators. So sometimes we have studies that are limited to a single item for each construct and then it can also be an issue to use SEM because if you have only a single indicator then you would have to have really good information about the reliability of that item in your sample. So you'd have to come up with an estimation of reliability so that you can fix the error variance appropriately for that item. And that could be a problem if you don't know how reliable that item is in your sample, then you might run into problems. And so single indicators can be used in SEM. However, then you'd have to really have a good sense for the reliability so that you can fix the error variance parameter a priori to a uh, reasonable value. So when you have only one indicator, then it may be better to use path analysis with observed variables. In particular, when the variables are sufficiently reliable, then having a single indicator in a path analysis might do the trick and might give you sufficiently dependable results. 
Another reason not to use SEM could be if the audience that you are presenting the study to or the readership of the journal that you are publishing in don't know SEM or don't appreciate SEM. So if they are not familiar with the technique or they're skeptical of latent variables or you would have to provide a lot of background information on the technique and your reviewers might still be skeptical or the readers might be skeptical, then maybe that's also a reason to resort to a technique that uses manifest variables such as path analysis. Again, in particular, if you have reliable variables, scale scores that have high reliabilities, then maybe path analysis would give you very similar results. And so then that might be preferred. Another reason could be when your model contains so many variables that it would get overly complex or large. So for example, if you have 15 variables and each variable is measured by three or four indicators or more, then you would have an, a really, really large model and that with many parameters and you would need a large sample to have um, rely get reliable results potentially model fit statistics might be affected by model size so there's this model size effect where the chi-square test becomes inflated due to there being many many observed variables and so then that might also be um, a problem and the analysis might be difficult to present with so many variables. It might become overly complicated and there might be issues with the model and then maybe it can be simplified again into a path analysis with some scores or observed variables that is easier to present and maybe reduces the overall complexity of the model. Now that doesn't mean that I'm generally against um, estimating and presenting complex models, but there may be situations where you have to simplify. And that's sometimes something that I also recommend to my clients when in consulting, when they come with huge models and all the things that they want to look at in the model, I say, well, maybe let's break it down. Let's make it simpler. Let's think about how we can um, have something that is more manageable, sometimes less is more, and maybe it's better to have something simpler because it's easier to understand, easier to present, it's less prone to errors or less prone to things that we might overlook, um, errors in the model specification or something like that. And then finally, one reason why you may prefer a simpler analysis than SEM may be if that simpler analysis gives you the same answer to your research questions or essentially the same answer, then really the question is, do you need to do something that is potentially a lot more complicated and harder to present if the simpler analysis shows you the same thing? So an example would be a path analysis again with highly reliable variables and if the path coefficients are pretty much the same as the ones that you would get from a latent variable model where you have multiple factors with multiple indicators and if the direction of all the effects leads to the same substantive conclusions, the same interpretation, then the question would be um, could you not present a simpler analysis with manifest variables if that analysis gives you pretty much exactly the same answer. I hope you liked this video. If you did, then please hit the like button, subscribe to this channel and check out the description for additional resources and I'll see you next time.